Hey everyone. It's Rita. Okay, Lola. Here, Lola. Um, how are you? It's Rita from Miss Rita to the Rescue here for today's cricket chat. It is, let's see, Friday. It's Friday, which means it is freebie Friday. I want to say a quick hello to my friends. Snowing in Indiana, says Linda. Hi, Linda. Um, hi, Sherry. <laughs> Janet, Leslie, Susan. Hi, everyone. Um, okay, well, we actually got some really beautiful weather here. And I actually have the window open, so I'm sure everybody can hear me talking. Hi, Gloria. Uh, hi, Leslie. And fear for less. Fear for less. And Valerie, good morning and happy Friday. It is Freebie Friday. And uh, I'm going to try something a little bit new today. Well, I kind of did it yesterday and it seemed to go well. Hey, you guys, what are you doing over there? Oh, he's taken a, an actual frame and brought it over to the door. I don't know why. So um, anyway, I'm going to try something new today. And that is I'm going to hold off on announcements until we get through most of the project. And um, that's because uh, it seems to me like a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people um, don't like me going on and on. So I, I figure the people that stick around are okay for the announcements. Plus, if it if you're uh, come in late, you won't miss them. So um, I will announce we have a winner. I will announce who the winner is for the sunflower cutie um, it, pretty soon, as as soon as we get started on the project. So um, yes, the pups are pretty excited. It's sunny and uh, feels good outside. Today we're going to be doing a freebie from this site called Barely Art. This is a site that makes, actually this company makes um, glue. The glue that we often use is called Barely Art Precision Craft Glue. And um, we're, we'll use a little bit today so you can see um, how it works, but we're going to mainly, we're going to be just using one of their SVGs. It's actually a really cool box that I wanted to um, show you. It's a gable box. So this is the gable box in as big as it can go basically with our machines. Um, and I figured it needed a little jazzing up. So I also created a file that would have these really cool stickers. And I'm going to show you how to do the stickers um, for the boxes. Um, this is a fairly big gable box. It's six by five um, by six by five by six. So um, the reason why I thought we'd do this is that a lot of times when you even buy gable box uh, files, they're one piece. And this file is not, it's two pieces. And that means that you can make it bigger. So for example, I got a gable box uh, from Lori Whitlock and it was really cute, but it was one piece. And so the box ended up being pretty small. So, um, so I thought this is good because we can maybe play around with a few of the things if we wanted to. Um, I happen to like the, the bottom. The bottom is really sturdy and I actually cut this out in craft board. So this is a very sturdy box, probably sturdier than a bakery box. Um, and when I was putting this together, it just reminded me of when I was a kid, um, when I remember when Dunkin' Donuts uh, had, they don't even call it Dunkin' Donuts anymore. When Dunkin' uh, came out with donut holes, we thought they were fabulous. And we were like, can we have donut holes? And we would have them for everything. And um, so, you know, my folks weren't the donut buying kind of folks generally. Um, so they would buy once in a while, they'd buy the donut holes for us. And usually it was for an occasion, like maybe in the spring for St. Patrick's day. And then they would decorate them and like, you know what I mean? Like 
Duncan would decorate them for Valentine's. Or I don't even know if they still do that. But when I saw this Gable box, that's all I thought of was the Dunkin' Donuts box, which is a slightly larger than this, uh, this one, and and uh, would hold like a whole bucket of donuts. You know, I don't know if anybody ever uh, Dunkin' Munchkins. Yeah, Munchkins holes. I don't know. Yeah, they were called Munchkins. Uh, I think they have something similar at Tim Hortons. Bits, they call them, I think, Bits. Um, Tim Bits or something. Anyway, they were always great because who can eat a whole donut? <laughs> me. But um, who wants to eat a whole donut? Not me. I mean, yeah, I do. But who can stand all that fat? But, I mean, I just love donuts. Anyway, um, so we're going to be doing something from this site. This site can be found at barely it's spelled b-e-a-r-l-y because that's their mascot is a bear um barely dot art that is their website and when you go to their website you see this great big splash about their cards for cubs program so if you're a crazy card maker and you want a place to send your cards you can get involved with this cards for cubs i see here on their website that they're having i think it's today uh, but they're having an event from 10 30 to 4. it says um it is a oh this is in person if you're in the dallas fort worth area so i think it's today but i would probably check <clears throat> if you're planning to make the voyage to Dallas, Fort Worth, and you can see that. Um, the reason why I say that is simply because they have up here something that's outdated. And so I don't know if this is for the, today or for some other time. Anyway, when you come here, head on over to here, the products and SVGs, then choose see all SVGs, and you'll see it's the most recent one they did. It's called the Gable Box Base, and it's rather plain. So if you want to dress it up, I'm going to show you how to dress it up. But I think just having a Gable Box, something that is... Um, easy to do and fun to have in your repertoire in case you ever need a little box not just for dunkin um dunkin donuts donut don what do they call them? munchkins not just for munchkins okay so <laughs> uh chocolate lemon feel filled boston you don't like boston cream kirsten I love Boston cream, anything, Boston cream. Okay, so this is the file. So what you would need to do is you have to put this file in your uh, cart and then you check out, um, so whatever you want. And they have quite a few, they're getting quite a few free uh, products. Um, they tend to be, uh, uh, they tend to be free, um, and so there's six pages of them. So take a look. There's always some great stuff posted there. So have a take take a look at that and um, put it in your account and go through that whole process and then hit download, okay? You have to download it, and what it will do is it will come to your download file. This is my download file, and um, let's see. It was here somewhere. Unicorn. Uh, rainy day. Here it is. Barely art and gable box base. Okay. Then we're going to open up Cricut Design Space. And I'm going to save this so that we can come back to it. And I'm going to choose a new canvas. I'm going to go to um to upload and then i am going to upload the image and choose browse now once i do that we'll see that download file that we were just in and we're going to look for the download here and uh go to downloads and then look for it unfortunately it's not in the same uh in the same way but 
I know it starts with barely. This is alphabetical. So um, I'm looking for barely gave a box right here. I'm going to click on that. And you'll notice you have quite a few selections here. What you want to do is choose the SVG. So when you're given the choice of many different um, many different files, you're going to want to choose that dot. SVG. PDF will not come in to Design Space, but these JPEGs and PNGs will, but you have to format them. So you're better off just grabbing one of these two. Now, what's the difference? Probably one has solid score lines, although I can't really tell. So, um, oh wait, no, that's not the case. This is actually, um, they give you two of the exact same SVGs. Um, so you really only need to bring in one. Let's do that. We'll bring in one and we'll upload it. Once it's uploaded, we can click on it and bring it into our canvas. And you'll notice that it has um, where the score lines are supposed to be. It has actual cut lines. So if you were to cut this out like this, you would basically end up with pieces of a box. So what you need to do is you need to come over here to all the different layers that are part of this design. And then you're going to click on each one of them and it says basic cut. Okay, right up there. See, it says basic cut and you can't hardly see what it's what it is. But then move your browser over here to operation and choose score. Okay, and do that for each of those lines. So um, there's one, two, three, four, five. Um, so I'm doing that five times. Score and score. I would imagine that you could probably do this easier than doing it five times. You could probably attach it and then do it. I hadn't thought about that um, until right now. Anyway, so now that you have them all um, changed to score, then you can select them all and attach those score lines to this. Now we want to add a second one. And now that we've done all the changes, we can just add that second one. And it's basically two pieces of a box that we're going to, they're exactly the same. So let's put them together and make sure we align them to the center so we can check the size. The size needs to be exact. So that's why we do that alignment. And right here, it up here on the width, you see that the maximum width isn't yet reached. It's close. It's 11.03. And then the height is 10.07. So what we can do is just switch that up to the maximum, which is 11 and a half. Once you get past 11 and a half, um, you are stuck a little bit if you're working with materials that are only 12 by 12. But if you, for instance, want to make it bigger than that, there are ways around it um, by sort of cutting things and splicing them. I think that's a lesson for another day is how do you make something bigger than the 11 and a half square um, bigger than the mat? We can do that. Okay, we can do that. Um, so, uh, so today what we're going to be doing is using something we got in the mystery box. Let me grab it so you can see. So if you are a fan of mystery boxes and you happen to pick up, not this last one, not the, uh, right, what was it called? Bow, bow bright or something, but it was the one before that might've been persimmon. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, this is actually for my friend, Marsha West, who tends to get these and doesn't know what to do with them, she says. So this is what we're going to use today. We're going to use this craft board sampler, which came in one of the... Um, one of the mystery boxes. Um, at first, when I did this, I did cut it out in white and I thought it looked a little stark. So I decided to go with the craft board. Okay. It comes with 30 sheets, I think. So if you do, if you use this all to make, uh, to make 
gable boxes. You get 15 gable boxes out of one package of craft board, which is a is a huge deal, I think. Why do you need to make score lines? Yeah, so Linda's asking, so why do you need to make score lines? The problem is that, you know, Cricut Design Space is its own software. And so unless you're a designer for Cricut, you don't get to use all the tools that, um, and so these big designers have to create software that can work in design space, but they're not created in design space. So tools like scoring and certain like a little more, uh, I don't know, advanced, um, advanced, uh, what do you call it now? Advanced, uh, you know, type of tools aren't available for those, for those uh, designers. Okay. Yeah, they're in as cut lines. Thanks. That's an easy answer. Okay. So we need to make sure we have two and here's 11 and a half inches. You can't see it that there's two there, but here they are. And all you do at this point is hit make it. Now we're going to be using craft board and there are score lines. So I am working with my maker and that means I'm going to be using something called the double score wheel because I'm using craft board. Let me show you. So when I choose craft board, which is one of my favorites, or if it's not one of your favorites, you go to browse all material and you can see it. It's in the top group craft board. I'm going to remember the material setting because I want to cut two of these out exactly the same. And you'll see, because I have a maker, it's telling me to load the double scoring wheel in clamp B. First off, if you don't have a maker, you won't need a scoring wheel and it will have, um, it will have the scoring stylus. If you don't have a scoring stylus, get one because they are super helpful and you can use them on any of the explore machines and the maker. Um, and I often show the stylus, but this is what it looks like. Okay. But if you have a maker, one of the most useful of the tools that are available is the scoring wheel. This is a scoring wheel. This is what it looks like. And this is the double tip. You take off and, and put on the tip, like pressing a plunger and then taking it off and simply put, I want to make sure that it it sort of trains on there, but it has two wheels. The reason why we're being told to put in the two wheels is um, it, this is a very thick paper that has a tendency or might have a tendency to crack if you just did a single score. Other types of paper that this does, it like the cracking generally are sparkle paper, shimmer paper, even um, glitter cardstock. So they created this double scoring wheel, which works really, really well. Um, I'm pretty sure the scoring wheel is sold with both the single and the double, but I'm not terribly sure about it. But I really do like this. Um, I really do like this, uh, this, this tool. Sorry, my brain is like going faster than my mouth is today. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to put in the double scoring wheel. And so let me move you so you can see what I'm going to do. All right. So here's the double scoring wheel. Before I even put in my mat, I'm going to open up clamp B and take out my, um, my this is my blade and housing it never hurts to check your blade and housing when you are putting in this just simply because um last week when i cut out a ton of this really thick american craft duotone glitter i had my my blade was stuffed with glitter it was not cricket glitter paper and that glitter shed everywhere and it was like stuck inside of my housing my blade so if you ever are having a problem or just when you have the chance go in and have a look all you have to do is press this down if you want to change it you just press it down and pull it out 
and put a new one in. Um, I do often get asked, how often do you change your blade? That really depends on you and how much you cut. I cut a lot and I cut every single day of the week. So I tend to change my blade once a month before I start having problems. I used to wait until I had problems because I was cheap, but I learned if I bought them in, if I bought my needles in a five pack, when they're on sale, they aren't nearly as expensive as buying them like this single. Okay. So um, I'm going to then take my double scoring wheel. I'm going to put it into my maker. Notice it has these little, I don't know, cogs, I think they're called. And so does this. That's what's different about the maker and the explore is it has this ability to use these types of tools. So people ask all the time, you know, why would you want the maker if you have the explore? It's the the difference there is the tools. There are a number of tools available. There's a knife blade, there's a rotary cutting blade, there's a scoring wheel, deboss, there's an engraving blade. There's a lot of different blades for the maker that are not available for um, for the explore. Okay, so here's my craft board. A little um tip, especially if you're using mats that aren't brandy new, I use um, just a little bit of regular masking tape that I actually keep on a masking tape dispenser to hold thick things like this in place. Um, you, you can't be completely unsticky, but um, it maybe the, the stick is kind of worn out in the top. So um, I do that because I don't want my, my material to start sort of roaming while the machine is going. And usually the thicker material does that. So uh, unless I have a brand new, or you could use also something called a strong grip mat, which also is available um, at Cricut. I buy those often and I use them a lot for, for um, they're purple. And I use them a lot for glitter, cardstock. And I often will use it for this type of thing. It's great for using to cut chipboard, especially thick chipboard. But even still, if you're cutting chip chipboard or wood they will tell you to glue to tape the product onto the mat that's why i think it's fine to do this so i've put it in all i need to do is hit that flashing button and it is going to do our uh scoring and then when it's done it will um stop and allow me to put back my blade and housing so what, now that I'm uh, halfway through, all the people that, that didn't want to stay for my announcements, you you lost because now I'm going to do my announcements. Um, first of all, we have a winner for the Sunflower Cutie. I'm going to tell you the name in a second. Um, but there was a lot of interest in the Sunflower Cutie and also to show my solidarity to the Ukrainians uh, fighting a war of aggression. Um, I have my second sunflower cutie that I'm going to be giving away and I've already set it up. Um, so starting tonight at midnight, if you are not this winner that I'm just about to announce, you have a second chance to win the sunflower um, cutie and it will go for two weeks. I will post a link and we're just to get us to 20,000 subscribers, I am 550 people away from, from the 20,000 mark. My goal is, I, it was my birthday, but we're having a huge celebration um, on the 31st where we're going to be giving away a lot of prizes. That's my other thing. <laughs> That's my other announcement. Uh, we're giving away a lot of prizes. Um, so I would so love if I could hit 20,000 um, by the 31st of March and I need you to help me. So if you want to um, help me and be entered in to win a prize, you're now going to have two chances. One is for the Sunflower Cutie 
And the other is for our March giveaways, which includes the Cricut 360 Bright table lamp, which it's not in view, but there's mine. Um, it also includes a, a mini press and an easy press mini bundle that's worth $278. So um, there are five separate winners and I will announce them all on the 31st um, of March. And hopefully by then we'll be at 20,000. Okay. Now um, I'm, I'm not going to cut out both of these simply because I want to talk about the, this, this part of the project. And that is a sticker. So when I, when I um, came and put this together yesterday, I said, wow, that's a great gable box. This is what it looked like. And we'll put it together. But I said, it looks a little lonely. So I started thinking, what could I do? Um, that was a freebie and all of that. Um, Oh, I forgot to mention who the winner is. Oh, so, 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 so sorry. So the winner today for the first Sunflower Cutie is Donna Marie Tortorella. Donna Marie Tortorella. Um, you are the winner. I hope she's on. I've seen her on here before. I think she came over from uh, Melody, from one of the things uh, that Melody. So um, if you are Donna Maria, you just won the Cricut Yellow Cutie. Definitely make sure you send me an email, Donna Marie. I, I keep saying Donna Maria, but it's Donna Marie. Uh, Donna Marie, send me an email with your full address okay because i have to send this out to you and you'll also get a few um extra doodads with it okay so um let's go back to our screen and congratulations donna thanks for everyone for participating we did actually meet that goal which was to hit our facebook 16,000 followers. So thank you for making that happen, guys. I really appreciate it. We were just kind of stuck on the 15 for a really long time. So as I mentioned, I wanted to do something to dress this up. You can do whatever you'd like, but I thought, wouldn't it be kind of cool? We were playing around with stickers earlier in the week. Wouldn't it be kind of cool to use some of these really awesome stickers from Miss Kate? And um, I'm going to show you, uh, is she, did she, it doesn't look like she's on, but I will contact her by email. My email address, by the way, is misread to the rescue at gmail.com. So let's go into images. And I want to go today, I want to go to image sets. And I wanted to show you about this designer. It's Miss Kate. It's actually Miss Kate. Let me see if it's going to go there. It's not letting me go. I want to go to image sets. Come on. <sighs> okay, here we go. So Miss Kate Cuttables, and that's the name of it, does have a website. You might see um, also they sell paper and stuff like that. Um, and they have their own website. But a little over a year ago, a lot of these designs showed up and they are part of Cricut Access. And they are extremely cute. And um, But they are very intense in terms of layers. So if you're not somebody who likes to glue, you might be looking at these going, yeah, but uh, I don't like to do all that gluing. Ha ha. We have print then cut. So I wanted to show you how we can use these for print then cut to decorate our gable box. You see that there's something for every, um, every holiday or season. So in the winter time, you can use these in the summertime, whatever. So just remember to search for Miss Kate. Okay. So um, go scroll down to Miss Kate and there are three for Easter. There's Easter phrases, Easter eggs, and Easter bunnies. Under Easter phrases, you'll find quite a few of these um images that are very layered and they say either happy Easter or happy Easter. So here is one, 
here is one. Now, some of them look like they're print and cut, and some of them are mostly cutting. So you go down and you pick whichever ones you like. For instance, I'm going to pick this one that says, no, I'm not going to pick that one because it doesn't say happy on it. Um, I'm going to pick this happy Easter. And look at this one, hop, hop, hop. I'll pick that one, this Easter one. There's a whole bunch, okay? Look at this one, happy Easter with the dots. Could you die? You could also um, get these little, if you wanted to, get these other little doodads maybe for the side of the box. Um, and uh, like, look, marshmallow peeps and whatever. So let's bring them into our canvas. I'm going to hide our box because we're not using it anymore. We already cut it out. And let's have a look at these images. Oh, one more announcement that I forgot. Tomorrow we were talking about uh, date night and I was going to show you guys a little bit about my um, my empress. First of all, I did get the big empress and um, and I love it. I played a little bit more on it. But then I thought we haven't had our Zoom call. Um, so I thought tomorrow being already being the 12th, so halfway through, which is when we usually do it, um, which should be our Zoom call. So um, I don't know what time you guys want to set it up. We usually do it at seven. So if you want to do the Zoom call at seven o'clock on Saturday, do let me know, okay? Um, so here are the images. Let's bring them down and let's sort of have a look at them. And you can see, we'll take one of them apart. So let's take this one apart. Ooh, isn't that cute? So if we were to cut this out, just cut this out, um, it would mean that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, at least eight layers. Some of these colors are the same. Nine, can't, uh, no, that's the same color. So nine layers if you wanted to cut this out, which, you know, you're welcome to do. But to me, once it gets beyond like five layers, it's sort of I'm done. You know, um, I love layering my cardstock, but, you know, more than five, it becomes super thick. It's just not for me. So you are faced with a challenge. You can do a couple of different things with these. But the easiest thing you can do is just flatten them and use them in your printer. And use, someone mentioned this, use your, um, you have a date, Bren? Oh, that's wonderful. Um uh, anyway, so here you, what you can do is just flatten them. So see how these are all very similar. So what I'm going to do is select them and go over here. I hope you can see me over here to flatten. So just go ahead and choose these and flatten them. All right. And I'm just flattening these all. I might not choose all of them, but I'm going to flatten them. So um, I need these images to be able to fit on my gable box. So I'm going to measure this and this to see what size I need. And that measurement is a six by three and a half six by three and a half. So these images, if I want to make a nice, great big sticker, have to be a little less than six by three and a half. So this one here is 5.2. I think what I would do is probably make it like 5.75. And if I have to manipulate the height, which I don't, but this one comes out as 3.3, that's going to be perfect for our project. But maybe this isn't the image you wanted to use. Or perhaps you wanted to make these and put them on the side. Okay. So let's check out what the size is for that. That's also five, it's five by three and a half. So if we want to put a couple of these on the side, we can make it uh, a little, mm, it's one, so three. So let's do three and a half three and a half by three. Okay. And I will continue to do that with all of these. All I'm doing is resizing here. You see, just like that. 
and I go back because I can never remember numbers. I go back 5.75 and 3.5. This one might be a little bit too big. I'll un, um, unlock it and sort of make a change. So here are all of our little um, cutesy images. I don't know which one you want to use. Let's choose, I don't know. Let, I'll keep them all on here, but let's choose this one because it's cute and we'll make two of them because I can put it on both sides of my, um, my box. And then let's also add uh, two of, I don't, should we have two, two of the, yeah, let's do that. Two of the bunny, the marshmallow bunnies. So we'll let's duplicate this. All right, now we're gonna do print and cut. But you know how I feel about print and cut. You have to maximize your space so that you get as many many items on your, your one sheet of printable vinyl. And that's what we're using today. We're using um, Cricut printable vinyl, though you can use sticker paper. This is what I'm using. It's called printable vinyl. Um, the one product I do not like and I will not um, ever tell you is good to buy is the sticker paper from Cricut. It's for me, I use a cheap uh, printer and it will not go through my printer. So if you are looking to buy something to make stickers with and you're on the Cricut site, get the printable vinyl instead. There is no difference between the printable vinyl um, in this, this kind of packaging and then the newer packaging. Same with the sticker paper. There's no difference, okay? But what we do when we do print and cuts is we go over two shapes and we choose a square. And then we are going to unlock the square and we're going to make it um, the actual maximum size that is our printable area. So that's a width of 6.75 and a height of 9.25, okay? So there is, this is, everything has to fit within this box, okay? You can do this differently, but this is, I'm a very visual person, and so this is how I do it. So here we go. I have my bunnies, and I'm going to try to fit all these things, and we do not want them to touch. However, we can turn things around if it makes it easier or do them on the side if it makes it easier and you can fit them in. So I think that's going to work. All right. So I have my side, my two sides and my two fronts for the box. Um, yes, it would be smaller. You're right. You're right. So, um, so now I, I have it right. So I'm going to remove this. We do not need it anymore. And then before I move any of these, I'm going to select them all. And then I'm going to hit attach. Now watch what happens when I go to make it. It all appears exactly as I put it on your page. You're using the maximum allowable space so you're getting as many stickers on there. This works great if you have a lot of little stickers, but it also works for big stickers too. So let's go ahead and hit continue. I'm going to send this to my printer. Again, you don't need an expensive printer to use print and cut. In fact, inkjet is the preferred uh, printer. There are very expensive printers on the market. Mine happens to be a $50 HP that I got on Black Friday like six or seven years ago. Um, and it's still kicking. I use um, the HP Instant Ink, which is a system where they send me the cartridges all the time. So that way I can use a lot of ink and I don't have to worry about replacing the cartridges. There are also echo tanks out there. These are, these are um, printers that have big wells and you can add a lot of ink to them. And then you can do this next trick, which is using the system dialog. So I turned off the bleed and I'm using the system dialog. Then I'm going to hit print. Now, normally what happens is you'll see the 
system dialog here show up right on here. If you don't see it, then go up here and, and use your, um, your little shrink your window. So there's my yellow window that I used and I'm going to see my system dialog here. I'm changing it to the quality being the best and I'm going to hit print. I've already put my printable vinyl in the machine and once I do that and it prints off, I'm going to cut the printable vinyl. So let's go ahead and wait for that printer to finish printing. And um, oh, and by the way, I will I will um, post the link for the Zoom. I'm getting better at that. What we'll do is the Zoom will also be broadcast on YouTube. So if you have a date like Bran or you cannot make the zoom then feel free to watch it on the replay it'll be on the replay on uh on youtube after the fact and it will be live on youtube as well a lot of times people they come on youtube to see it and then they get redirected to the zoom so they can be you know participants in the zoom it does not cost a thing to be part of the zoom call um anybody can do it you just need to be able to dial in on the zoom which will you can do that from your phone you can do it from your computer whatever and i think i will do it and also i will have my camera ready so you guys can see the empress in action but i just didn't want to make it all about the empress i thought we need to have our zoom call um Okay. Of course, my printer is acting up and I heard it printing, but I don't know what happened to the print. So I, ha ha, I, I um, worked ahead and I printed it ahead of time. So here it is. This is what you're going to get. And you will need something like a, a weeding tool and you will grab one of the corners if you can do this with your hand, feel free to do it with your nails or whatever. I can never do that. So I just kind of grab the top of the corner there and then I pull away. Whoops, I just ripped that. So I pull away and yeah, help it along so that you have these great, awesome stickers that you can put onto your cable box. So I have three. I printed it ahead of time. So now I can put these same ones on my, on my cable box. So let's check out the cable box. So I've got the two pieces. Remember they're exactly the same. And what you're going to want to do, come on cable box. Come on. What you're going to want to do is fold at all of those score lines okay and there are a lot don't forget up here okay like here and you're just going to fold and i would suggest that you fold it both ways because trying to put the gable box together sometimes you don't realize which way that um it needs to fold okay so here is box side one and here is my box size two and why is it not looking right okay there we go and we put them side by side and if you have it like this that's wrong it has to be so that the tab is on a flat side okay and then you have the tab over here so we're going to after we've um, folded everything, scored everything. We're going to lay these side by side and we're going to glue along here. Um, and this is actually barely art precision craft glue in an art glitter glue, um, bottle. So don't feel like I'm not representing. I just don't have a whole lot of bottles actually dropped one of my bottles on its tip and the tip actually broke off. See that? So I don't know. Okay. So we're going to glue this. Now, if you want to use double, where, 
if you want to use double stick tape, um, you can also use double stick tape, but um, I find after a while, sometimes with boxes, double stick tape tends to unstick. Okay. So that's why I'm using glue. Once it's sort of caught on, you're going to do the same thing on the second tab over here. Now, while we have it folded on flat on its side or whatever, we can go ahead and put our stickers on. So let's take our stickers. Happy Easter sticker. I like this one. Or whatever you want to put on it, clearly. Okay. Uh, oh, look. Oh, well. Nobody's going to see it. They're not going to know. They'll never know. All right. So, oops. No, I thought that was, a, <laughs> it wasn't. I thought it was a wrinkle on my sticker, but it wasn't. So. All right. So put the same one on either side. Listen, Mr. Printer, you got to start behaving or else I'm going to replace you. Um, okay. I might have put that on wrong or sort of crooked, but no. Okay. No, I think it looks fine. Okay. Now what we have to do is assemble the box. So the box is going to, at the bottom, thank you, Donna. Donna. Donna's love. Are you Donna Marie? Um, I can't, I don't know if you are Donna Marie. Okay. So here's the bottom of the box and then it's going to go like this. Okay. So what I would suggest is you put the glue here and here first, then put this flap down and then put the glue there because I accidentally put too much tape and now I have a sticky bottom on my box. So, so we're going to put the glue. I, I only just dropped the glue yesterday, so I haven't had a chance to replace the the bottle. That's why I stuck, I stuck, um, a paper towel in there because I didn't want it to all dry up. I will get the, the, um, replacement head. Okay. So there's the bottom of the, make sure it's all squared off, turn it around. So it, you know that it's squared off like this. And you can either use your glue bottle or your hand or whatever and make sure that those are nice and squared off. And now you're going to fold in these sides a little bit. And then here's where it's important that you have a lot of movement, okay? So you're going to bring in these sides and match them up just like that. And then put the bottom of the tab into the slit on the side which watch me i can't do it maybe you can do it from the top too i always do it from the bottom um there we go okay and do the same thing on the side sadly it's just the first time you do it that this causes you a little bit of problem not after i don't know if that's sad or not it's just it's just the way that it is. Now, obviously, you're going to do a better job than I am because I was sort of rushing it. Um, but this is it. Isn't that a nice box? Now, this is what it looks like in white. It's a really good box. And you could do it for anything. It's a great... Um, it's a great... Ah, uh, uh, Miss... Wait, your your Anna is birthday is the same. She's gonna be four. I wish I was gonna be four. <laughs> um, so is Donna's love the same? 
Uh, yes, you won the Sunflower Cutie. You missed the announcement, but you won. I need you to send me an email, okay, uh, to Miss Rita to the Rescue at Gmail. Okay, very cute box, very versatile box. I want to thank the folks at, at Barely Art for um, giving us these nice free SVGs to work with. Um, this would, I don't think it would fit the whole like Duncan Munchkin, but it would probably fit two dozen of them or cookies or whatever, even a a little gift box for a non-edible treat. But since I'm always dieting, I think about food. So <laughs> that is it for today. In case you came in late, I will tell you a couple of the announcements. So we had a winner for the um, Sunflower Cutie. Uh, and if you have to go, that's fine. I just wanted to, um, to just like reiterate the announcement. So um, we had a winner for the first Sunflower Cutie. It's Donna Marie. Um, and she now is on. So she's going to send me an email. But because we had a lot of people um, that were interested in this color. And it's a gorgeous color. Let me show you. I did find a second Sunflower Cutie to give away. So we're going to do that again. I will post the information on the description of the videos from now until the end. All you have to do is subscribe. And if you're already subscribed to YouTube, you just have to like, follow, or comment, or all three, so that I can reach my 20,000. I'm also doing my monthly giveaways, and um, they are a big giveaway. Uh, let me just go here and see if I can't get to my giveaway information. No, because I'm on, I'm not myself. I'm on Let's log out and go to uh, my, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Forget it. Forget it. But, but my Miss Rita to the Rescue has all the information. And always when the, you're in the description of any of my videos, you'll see that we're having two giveaways going on at the same time. So that means you can put your name in twice. Once for the giant giveaway, which will be um, over on the 30th, and the second time for the um, Sunflower Cutie, the second Sunflower Cutie. So there's always chances to win. You just have to make sure that you're putting your name in um, and, and doing it properly. By the way, you can just go to Raffle Copter and all you do is put your name and your email so that if I can't reach you on a live, I can email you, which is what I was going to do until Donna showed up. Thank you again to Barely Art for um, having these SVGs. Thank you to my beloved Cricket who uh, gives me the uh, resources to give away every month. They're the greatest. And <laughs> I, I found it um, a little weird and uh, humorous that people were complaining that um, that Cricket would come out with something just when the gas prices were going up. And I thought, that's the weirdest. That is the weirdest argument. They were mad at Ashish Aurora for, for coming out with an expensive piece of machinery. And I'm like, because the gas prices went up and I thought, wow, that is like the, the biggest non sequitur I've ever heard. So um, anyway, uh, you know, whatever. So thank you, everyone. We will see you tomorrow for the Zoom at seven o'clock in the evening and I will post the link. Yeah, they're goofy. You know, people are just goofy. They're strange. I think it's just a way to complain. People do like to complain. There are some people who like to complain. Anyway, um, I will see you either tomorrow night and we'll, we'll just kind of, yeah, they just like to complain. It's so funny. It is wicked random though, huh? Yeah. I was like, we were, we were laughing about it yesterday with the product experts. I'm like, that's so weird. It's just weird anyway. Um, and then we'll be back on Monday for another great week of, uh, cricket chat. I'm not sure what we're going to do. We're going to do the hat press. And we have to, uh, our last minute things with St. Patrick's Day. And also we have Easter coming up. So we've got to do Easter 
and stuff like that. So stick with me and I will see you again really soon. Have a wonderful day and um, get some crafting in. It's super good for you. Take care, everyone.